Have the Cubs changed the narrative? That's the question I asked before the ad read. What do you what do you guys think? Have they changed the narrative about being cheap and not able to re-sign their guys? I believe yes. So like anyone else, I have my thoughts and probably qualms about some of the last few years and some of the spending and, you know, biblical losses, things of that nature, right? I'm not saying it's all good and that, you know, some of these years have been what we all deserve and what this franchise should have gone through to get to this point. But Jed, I think, has proven that the narrative that he is unwilling to sign extensions or unwilling to give out big contracts or spend money is not true. He is willing to do all of those things and now has done all of those things for the right guys at the right time. That's that's what I believe, and I think to suggest otherwise, I mean, at this point, like, it just isn't true, right? Like, we can always have opinions on they should have done this instead or they should have done that instead, but he has given out multiple extensions to homegrown players. He has signed big long-term contracts, Dansby Swanson, seven years, uh, a lot of money, Jamison Tyone, multiple years, a lot of money. He's done it. And when you look back to the core, the infamous trade deadline, right, of 2021, we'll see how things shake out. Some of those deals are long-term. There's no answer yet right now. But at the moment, Anthony Rizzo is the only one of those that looks like a player you definitely would like to have on this team well, I'd right like now. Kyle Schwarber, but that's another story. Like That was before 2021, yeah, but yes. <laughs> but that just, it well, it doesn't that, mean the decisions are the right decisions. It just does show that they can re-sign guys. They've now signed right. Rizzo to one extension, Hendricks to an extension, Hap, and Horner. Mm-hmm. They've had mm-hmm. four guys take team-friendly deals now that, again, both sides have to agree to it. Both sides have to be willing. There's no question, uh, David Bodie, if you want to say five, but <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Like yeah. That was obviously... They were giving him some security, and they were hoping he was going to be better than he's turned out to be, but sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Kyle Hendricks, you got for an absolute bargain. Mm -hmm. Now you hope you get the same thing. You're getting prime Hap, prime Horner. You got prime Hendricks. Um, And so those have shown yes. Who was it in the chat? Somebody said yes and no. And... Well, I was just going to say yeah. that, like, I think on Schwab's, think right, like, that's an example of, like, that was a mistake. That was a cheap, money-motivated move. And that sucks. And we can still criticize them for that. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that all of this narrative is true, right? Like, yeah. as they build forward, they are doing now the things we want to see them do. They're spending money. They're extending guys. A lot of things can be true at once, mm-hmm. right? But this overarching narrative to your original question, like that they don't spend any money, they're unwilling to extend, like they've flipped the script on that. It, I think. it doesn't mean that the narrative was wrong before. It just means that they've started to change the script. We can sit here and argue whether or not it was wrong before. Yeah. Because maybe Bryant and Rizzo and Javi and Wilson were asking for too much. That's another that's another podcast. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is they've started to change the narrative now. They've done four guys. They've done two in a row this year. They brought in Dansby. They did spend big money on a shortstop. No, they didn't spend Aaron Judge money. They spent $177 million. And the common theme in all of these players, hardworking, good clubhouse guys, good teammates, and willing to do whatever it takes, even if it means changing and adapting their playing style or in Horner's position, his position on the field even. Yeah. Yeah. So Horner went and changed from shortstop to second base. Mm -hmm. Hap is a guy that was willing to go down to the, no, he wasn't willing. He was told to go to the minors, had to work on it, wasn't happy about it, came back and has turned himself into a gold glove left fielder who was an all-star now, Mm -hmm. right? Hendricks is a guy who went about it and listened to anything they wanted to tell him about pitch lab, all those things. These are hardworking, good teammates that across the board, everybody in the clubhouse likes. So have they changed the narrative? Yes, they're starting to. Have they fully changed the narrative? No. They still, to, like, it's so wild and it's so, like, I honestly think these this set of people I'm about to say 
I honestly think you hang out in your mom or dad's basement and just hang out there and just are so pissed off about everything in the world. But the Cubs haven't given out a $300 plus million contract while all kinds of other teams have. And money in baseball is only skyrocketing. I mean, Shohei Otani is going to get a ton of money. I think the only way that the large majority of this fan base is going to believe that the Cubs are or the Ricketts family is ever or is ever going to believe that they're willing to do whatever it takes to make this team a winner on a consistent basis is if they shell out some sort of massive large contract. And listen, they gave Swanson 7 years 177 million in 2023. That's not a lot considering what Bogarts mm-hmm. got. You're right. What Turner got what Mike Trout got, what Mookie Betts got, what Shohei Otani's going to get. It just isn't. At the same time, Swanson has been way better than what we expected. And people said he was a consolation prize. Right. I think at the while all of what you guys said is true, and while I can still say that while I, that I, I like what the Cubs have done since Jed has taken over, the moves in free agency that he made, even going into last year, because you guys didn't mention Marcus Stroman, who's off to a great start this year. Say a Suzuki that when he is healthy, he's yep. very, very good. No 10-year deals here, by the way. Right. He's made very solid free agent deals to this point to build this roster. I mean, in June of last year, my Twitter mentions were full of, oh, this is going to be a five-year rebuild. Right. We're six and five right now in the middle of April. We just extended Ian Happ and extended Nico Horner before the season. And this team doesn't look like a team that's in the, in a rebuild right now. Certainly I'm, not for five years. Right. <laughs> I, I, I think what Jed Hoyer has done since taking over and considering when he took over, things were a mess when it came to not being able to extend players, but also the farm system was in shambles. And... You know, the, like the the dynasty or whatever didn't work out and they had to get out of that. They had to stop putting Band-Aids on. That is what they did. They ripped the Band-Aid off at the deadline in 2021. It sucked. We're always going to remember it as one of the more sad days in Cubs fandom. No doubt. But again, people thought this rebuild was going to take four to five years. Actual, like Actual people in my Twitter mentions last year telling me this. And we're sitting here right now at six and five. And if you feel like that's still a thing, even this early in April then again, I assume you're in your mom and dad's basement pissed off in your underwear, and that's it. So for me, yes, he has changed the narrative, but it's going to take a big, big deal for all of Cubs fans to, to believe that Show they are willing me. to go I got killed. and do Show whatever it takes, hey. to do whatever it takes to make this a World Series contender. That that's that's hey, that's basically Chicago, my take. What on do you show him? I got killed for saying I had receipts. Cody's out here saying oh. you're in your underwear in your <laughs> mom's basement. Well, Nobody uh, bats an eye. I just want to point out, like my parents' basement was pretty nice. I I would be I, like well, when I was younger, it was pretty nice. Not, I would like, hang out in there. Like I don't know. <laughs> we had a lot of spiders I, in our basement. I also just want to and- like to add on to Cody's point, like and just to like I think like from where Luke and I were saying, like just to be clear, like jobs not finished. Right. right. No. Like this organization still needs to get to the point where they reflect what this fan base brings to them, their Forbes valuation like this. Th- but that's what Jed is working towards. And that's why we get excited about this stuff, because they're doing the stuff that help, you know, the building blocks that get us there. But the job's not finished.